Testing, testing, testing. Okay, let's check and see if we've got some sound. Test. Let's go ahead and bounce that up a little bit more. There we go. And get that down here. Testing, testing. Testing, testing. Okay, I think we're ready to go. Doing another test on the microphone. Doing another test on the microphone. Doing a test on the microphone. Testing, testing, testing. Okay, here is the um, M track analog input. There we go. Looks like we're ready to go now. There we go. Looks like we're ready to go now. Okay, well, I'm doing something I've not done before. I'm actually recording from my workbench in my wonderful COVID area. And uh, today I'm gonna work on a retro project. We're gonna be looking at the Retro Flag 
GPIA case. This little guy right here. It's reminiscent of a Game Boy, but you can install uh, emulator software on there to make it a retro gaming device. And a lot of people online do use this case, but they use it in a way that uh, they're trying to emulate many game systems such as Nintendo, um, Sega, NES systems, uh, even PlayStation systems with some of the more modern games. What I want to do is really look at it from a really retro computing and retro gaming and only install things that are 8-bit. So I'm going to be focused on the, uh, let's see, the Atari 2600, the Commodore, the, the uh, Atari computers, the Sinclair computers, and I want to focus on those and not take a real heavy gaming uh, em emphasis on the device, but how can we use this device to experience some retro computing? So this is a live uh, recording. So I have my workbench over here. Let me show you what I have set up. This is the workbench right here. So as you as you can see, this has not even been opened and been opened up yet. So we'll be going uh, right from here all the way through, and hopefully by the end of this recording, we'll have something that resembles a handheld retro gaming device. I do have everything up on the screen here as well that we're going to need. I have my notes. I have already pre-downloaded all the files and I have Etcher, which is the way that we're going to burn our SD card to put on the emulator software. So for this project, really all you need are a few things. We need the, uh, the RetroFlag GPI uh, case, which I've shown you. We need a Raspberry Pi Zero. The Raspberry Pi Zero will go into the case and we'll show you how to do that hopefully. You'll need at least a 32 gig, although I'm, you probably don't even need that for the type of project I'm doing. Since I'm doing retro gaming, all of these games are very, very small. So I am uh, going to be doing or using just a, a 16 gigabyte card that came with the Raspberry Pi Zero. And I have not shown you that, but this is the Raspberry Pi Zero right here. So we'll be preparing that. So along the way, we'll be burning the uh, image that we're going to use for the retro gaming. And in this case, we're going to use the Super Retro Pi. And there is a Super Retro Pi group on Facebook that you can go search for. And uh, once I'm done with this, I will probably compact this entire live video down to some kind of manageable chunk that you can watch at your own leisure if you want, along with the live. I'll keep that up too in case you want to see the step-by-step. -step. But I also have lots of links below in the notes and I will also uh, more than likely and I've already started preparing it you can see in front of you on the desktop version I've really already started to create a blog post which I'll have all the links and everything you need so don't worry about any of that right now you can just kind of uh, watch along and uh, I'm not sure if anybody is actually going to bounce in on my live feed I did post it on Twitter we'll see if nothing else uh, it's just a way for me to capture what I did today and uh, hopefully some of the the fun that I had and the frustrations along the way I'm sure I'm sure that's going to happen too. I'm sure there'll be plenty of frustrations as we go and you'll see those. So I uh, think we will get started. So let's go ahead and go over to the workbench. And uh, the workbench is down below here. You can uh, follow along here and uh, remember the chat room is open. Uh, hey, there's a guy in there. Let me say hello. Uh, we are recording. So this is interesting. This is my first chat. Hey, uh, you are my first live chat uh, 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 what contributor yeah let's do that okay so the, the there is somebody in the chat there is a um, name Raul Duran Bar Barist I know I've killed it Barist off so thanks for joining us uh, as we go through here we just started and we're gonna open up the case on this uh, retro flag Raspberry Pi case so let's go ahead and get into this let me get uh, and uh, I talk a lot so uh, get used to me just rambling pretty much about nothing. But if you're following along, that's it's great. Uh, Raul, I really appreciate you joining us. Uh, that's really cool to have you on board and uh, share with all your friends that we're doing a project live if you want. Um, all right, so we're going to get this out of its cellophane wrapping here. This particular set that I ordered came with a few extra features. Um, We'll go ahead and I'll just show you the box here first. You can see the box. Um, won't go too much into it. Um, so we've got the GPI case uh, here. We've got on the back, it tells everything that's included. 
We've got a cable in here. We can change our contrast. Wow, great to know we can change our contrast. We have power, micro SD, volume, phones, and we'll be taking a look at all that as we go in. It, uh, it is well rated on Amazon. If you don't, if you haven't seen this on Amazon, go take a look at the links and you'll see that. Uh, people love this little device, so we're looking forward to it. This one comes with a little case. Uh, the package I bought, there are various versions that you can get online. Uh, actually a nice little case. Uh, this whole kit right here, just the case and uh, the RetroFlag uh, GP, GPI, I guess is what they call the GPI case, is about 70, 80 bucks depending on when you buy it. And uh, I just got it a few days ago and it was about $70. I think it was 77 actually. So we're gonna go ahead and set the case aside. We're not gonna need that for a while. So I'll move that over here. Uh, hey, uh, uh, Raul is a Pixel Power Podcast uh, fan. Thanks, I appreciate that. And uh, um, has been following along since the early days on Google Plus. I know, isn't it a shame that Google Plus has died? I hate that we lost Google Plus, really enjoyed it. I really appreciate you joining in today and seeing what we're working on, Raul. I'll be looking for you to tips if I have if I have problems. I don't know if you can help me with this project, but I may need your help. So uh, let's go ahead and pull the things out of the box here. The, the other things that I have uh, that I have not mentioned that I'm going to be using for the project, of course, I do have the Raspberry Pi W or Zero, Raspberry Pi Zero W, long name. I also have a heat sink, but I do not know if we're going to be able to use that. I don't know if it'll fit in the case. We'll take a look at that, though. I, of course, I have my SD card adapter so that we can burn the image. And I have the SanDisk uh, 16 gigabyte card that came with this uh, Raspberry Pi Zero kit that I bought as well. Now, there's some things that came with the kit I'm not going to need for this project, for instance, this nice case. But it was a really good deal for this kit. It's about $25 for all of this, including the 16 gig card. So that's that's not a bad value for what we're getting. Uh, you're on your own. Oh, thanks, Raul. I appreciate it. I am on my own. Uh, I feel like I'm on my own a lot in these things. So it's really cool to actually have somebody here uh, who can uh, watch me get frustrated and struggle with a project. Let's see. Inside here, we have another nice cloth case. This is, this is pretty nice. It's a, it's a felt case. I'm going to go ahead and set that aside with our other case over here. Also, we have um, this in here, which I have no earthly idea what that is. It is double-sided tape. Looks like maybe this is potentially a heat sink. We'll find out when we look at our instructions. This one comes with this really cool little cool uh, keychain, and uh, it's also interesting because not every package you purchase, you get a cute little keychain. How about that? Keychain for all your retro gaming goodness. Very sweet. Uh, we'll set that over here to the side as well. We do have our instruction manuals, which we will follow closely. So we'll keep that out here. And one more item. Oh, you know, I set out my screwdriver because I thought we were going to need one. However, the kit also includes its own handy dandy screwdriver. So that's very nice of them to actually include the screwdriver. You need. Not bad. What else do we have? Something else in here? We have our screws in here for the project. I'm going to leave those in here because sure enough, as soon as I don't do that, I am going to lose those. All right, so, so far so good. We have everything we need. I'll go ahead and keep the screwdriver out. And then we ha also have our USB, no, our power cable. Uh, so it is a USB, but it's this mini plug. You can see that there. So I assume this will go into the power supply on the case. You do have to provide your own power. Uh, I have power on the workbench right over here, so we can do that a little bit later. That's easy enough. Now, let's take a look at the device itself. See what we have in here. Okay. This is the part we've all been waiting for. Here's the case. It is very reminiscent of the Game Boy. Uh, to include even, uh, uh, I believe, the cartridge pulls out. And I believe what we'll find is in here is where we're going to put our Raspberry Pi Zero. But that is, uh, it's really, I kind of like that design where it mimics the old cartridge, which I guess means if you had a couple of these, you could uh, swap this out with a different Raspberry Pi Zero and an image, and you could have multiple configuration images and just pop those in and pop those out. So that is a pretty interesting design. Uh, on the back here, it uses three uh, AA batteries, and I have some rechargeables over here that will throw that in there. 
On the back, there are two buttons back here. A lot of people may not know, know that. Those are the shoulder buttons. So when you're gaming, if you need shoulder buttons, that's where those are going to be. Here's our power adapter. Here is our contrast. We'll take a look at that once we get it fired up. We have our regular gaming. And this, let me get some of this stuff off of here. This feels really nice. It's, it feels really well made. Uh, it's not something somebody just 3D printed it and shipped. This is a manufactured product. We've got select, start, all the requisite buttons. Hopefully there's a speaker there. Place for a headphone jack if we need that. We have our volume and uh, let's go ahead and peel off the screen protector. It's over now. I am probably going to scratch up the screen now because that's what always happens to me. Okay, probably should have waited on that, but we'll go ahead and take it off. So again, very, very nice, very well made. Looking forward to, to kind of messing around with this once it's live. Okay, so that's ready. Let's put that over here. All right, let's go through our instructions here. We are going to, oh, I, I was going to share with you the uh, power. The power does come in right here, and it is just a standard power plug. It's, just, it, it's interesting uh, that they didn't use like a micro USB, uh, but uh, in all actuality, my preference is this kind of plug. However, if you lose this cable, um, you're done except for battery, or you're going to have to buy a new cable. So I guess that is the negative that it's not a proprietary, or that it uh, it's a negative that it is proprietary because you can't use a micro USB. So, okay. Let's set that aside over here and let's go see what we have. Step one, install safe shutdown script. So what we're going to do on this one, let me go ahead and bounce on over to the, the desktop now. What we're going to do is um, we are using the Super Retro Pi image. And what's nice is there are some scripts that you are supposed to install on the image that you place on the device. Uh, but if you search around, you can find um, emulators, software, and, and uh, installations that already have done all that for you. So I did. It is the RetroPie Facebook group. Let me just go ahead and show this to you here. Uh, we'll go here. They're on Facebook. That's the wrong one. Those are in some instructions that someone else prepared. Let me grab the right one here for you. So this is here. Uh, and that's not right either. See, this is what happens when you do it live. You are just so messed up, you don't know where everything is. It is on the Facebook. Let me go to Facebook here and see if I can pull it up for us here. And it is the Super Retro Pie. So let's go to Super Retro Pi. And here's the group that you're going to want right here, Super Retro Pi, and they have prepared a distribution for us to put on the uh, micro SD card that includes all the scripts that these instructions right here are asking you to do, which is very nice. So I've already downloaded it here. The uh, first thing we need to do is, you can see it right here, is we need to unzip that. Um, actually, I'm not so sure we do have to unzip it now that I think about it, uh, because I use Bellana Etcher. Etcher may be able to go ahead and create that image right from the zip file. Let's go ahead and see if we can do that. So let me go back to my workbench here. What we're going to do is take our SD card here. If I can get it out of here. Maybe I'll just use that handy dandy screwdriver to help me get that one out of there. Holy cow, it does not want to come out. What have they done to me? Oh, here we go. Oh, gosh, that was a tough one. Okay, and uh, I'm going to pull this. I will not need the adapter for this one. So let's go ahead and put this in here. And then I have a, a um, a, a, an extension for my USB cable. So I'm going to put that in there. Now let's go back to our desktop over here. And we're just going to see if I can drag the zip. A lot of times Bellana Etcher uh, will just let me drag a zip and burn directly to. So let's see what happens. It says cannot. So I'm going to have to unzip this. So let's go ahead and extract here. And that's not good because that means that the download is probably corrupted. 
Let's see. And I thought I had everything prepared, which means I'm probably going to have to re-download that. And it does. It is corrupted. So I am going to get that downloaded again. I, luckily, I have the link. Um, it's probably going to take a little bit longer just because I am streaming now. Let me go ahead and close this. Wow. Let's go ahead and grab download. Oops. And great thing about live, right? You get to watch all of the things. Now, I'm going to go ahead. The last time I did this, I downloaded the whole thing as a zip. I'm, I'm going to, well, I really want both of these files. So let me go ahead and download this one as a standard download. Let's not have it. And uh, allow. And this is going to take a while. So let me go ahead and I want to get this one downloaded too as a standard download. Okay, we'll let those go while we are letting those do their thing. Uh, I have, let me get rid of this guy here. And let's go back up here to the workbench and we'll just start getting our Raspberry Pi out and see what's going on here. Isn't this exciting, Raul? Watching me uh, already have errors. I'm definitely going to have to edit this thing if I decide to leave it online. Okay, so here's our Raspberry Pi Zero. This is the Zero W, which means it has Wi Fi. There are versions that are just the Raspberry Pi Zero without Wi-Fi. This one includes Wi-Fi and you're going to want Wi-Fi because you are going to want to connect uh, via SSH to put your game cartridges or your ROMs on here. Now, I am only um, going to install ROMs for games that I either own or they're homebrew. So I'm not going to get into where you can get those games, um, that type of thing. But um, um, well, actually, I guess as I show you where I get ROMs or the games I own, uh, you may uh, see where you can find those things. But we will focus on homebrew probably for, for this demonstration. I do want to find out, looks like uh, we're close over here on our downloads. Um, let me go ahead and see what's going on here. Looks like we're getting in pretty good shape. I want to find out, there we go, it's asking uh, where I want to save these files. So let me go ahead and Bear with me a little bit here. I've got, um, I think I'm going to put that in my downloads for now because I don't want to ding up the network trying to back that up onto Google Drive. So let me go ahead and put that one there and allow. And we'll put this one here, the Super Retro Boy Revision E into downloads. It looks like I have everything. So let's go back over to the desktop and see if we can keep working on this. So we're going to minimize and we'll minimize this. And let's go to our downloads, which is where I put the, these files. So um, looks like this is still downloading. So we've got this still needs a second or two to finish that download. Yes, you can see that here down here. It's still downloading. Who else joined? Someone else joined? I can't believe it. Were they in and out? Is that what happened? They just kind of came in and bounced out real quickly? Is that what happened? I missed it. We had two. Oh, it says two watching. Oh, it does say two watching. Hey, whoever else is out there, uh, drop into the chat room and let us know you're in. Raul and I are just having a wonderful conversation with myself. So, uh... <laughs> We are, there we go, it looks like we're completed. Let's go ahead and drop this in. Um, okay, now it looks like we have the RAR file. Now I am gonna try this again. Again, usually you can just drop a, uh, an archive file into 
to Balana Etcher. Let's see if this is going to work for us. Yeah, not a format type. So we are going to have to uh, extract here. So let's go ahead and do that. So it is extracting. Oh, it's in a folder. That's probably why. So let's let that go ahead and get that taken care of. Five files remaining. Uh, I can really tell my computer is laggy trying to do all of this at the same time. This is interesting. All right, so uh, if you're just joining us, we're trying to get this thing working with a Raspberry Pi Zero. This is, uh, again, the Retroflag GPi case. It's a handheld um, retro gaming device, which we're looking forward to, to getting going here. So that's what we're doing, and we're back on the workbench. And right now, there's a whole lot of waiting going on. Um, as I mentioned, I'll probably, or I will... I am, I am going to um, edit this down for a final video, I'm sure. So two people watching, that, that, that's the most I've ever had. Wow, two people. And I'm a little concerned because it looks like it is, it has kind of stopped. Let's see what's going on here. It says that it looks like this is already extracted, but it says this is still going. Shall we try it? Oh, let's take a risk. Let's see if we can get this thing over here and uh, see what's going on. I, I, I wonder if I'm still broadcasting because my computer has stopped moving. Oh, there we go. There we go. Now we're good. Okay. So there we go. We have everything. It just took a second. Um, so here's our... Let's see what we have here. We have... Uh, this image here, we have this one. This is all included in the uh, package. Here is our actual image that we're going to burn. We have a warning. What's our warning? Our warning is, please keep in mind that we aim to offer a clean, stable, and efficient experience. Okay, well, thank you for the clean and efficient experience. This um, WPA supplicant conf uh, is something that we have to do something with. Uh, we'll take a look at that here in a minute and see what. But now we should be able to come over here drag this image file over on here and there we go we've got it now let's select our target you have to be very careful with this uh, if you do this the wrong way you could uh, overwrite something you did not want to overwrite for instance this backup file which is 750 gigs it's a large drive it obviously is not what we want to use if i did select that it would write over everything on that external drive so uh, with Bolana Etcher, we're going to choose this mass storage device, which is about 16 gigs, which is perfect. That's what we saw. We're going to continue, and then we get to just watch it flash. And this is, again, the point where you kind of keep your fingers crossed that everything's going to work. So let's go ahead and tell it to flash and see what happens. And put in our password. Now, in case you're wondering... And you may not be wondering, but uh, I'm going to tell you because I have some time to kill. In case you're wondering, I am using uh, Linux today for this. And uh, the, the Linux distribution I use is Elementary OS, which I've really come to like. I've used Linux Mint. I've used Ubuntu. Uh, but Elementary OS and using Flatpak apps is just the way I really... Um, it's, it's just a distribution I really enjoy and the way I love using my uh, older PCs to, to kind of breathe new life into them. So if you're interested in that, there you go. So we have three people watching now. So welcome to our third part, three pe wait, yep, three people. Hey, Raul, we have, we have, we're, we've, we've doubled. We've doubled in uh, numbers in just uh, a little under what, 15 minutes, I think. So, so what we're doing now, folks that are maybe just popping in, we're, we're flashing our micro SD card with the Super Retro Boy Revision E, which was uh, just released on 5.5.20. So this is a really recent uh, distribution of this retro gaming package that we are going to install on top of this device and have some handheld retro gaming goodness. Now, again, as a reminder, I am going to focus 
on 8-bit games because I'm a retro gamer. I love old Commodore computers, Atari 2600s. I'm an old guy. I like the old stuff. So we're not going to be doing anything new and modern like a PlayStation. I know some of you are thinking, how is that modern? I'm old, remember? So that is modern. But we're going to focus on 8-bit games for this. And so now what we're doing is flashing the Super Retro Boy Revision E on to our micro SD. And there's not a lot I can do right now. I think we're just going to be kind of in holding for a little bit. Uh, we could, I guess, maybe get ahead of our installation of our Raspberry Pi. Yeah, we could do that. We can go ahead and start working our case. Let's go ahead and do that. While this is flashing, let's go back to our workbench here. And uh, we do know that what we what we're going to be doing is putting the, let me see if it's in our instructions. Yes, uh, first of all, we've already done the safe shutdown scripts. Okay, so we'll, we'll go ahead and start working on the install here. I We definitely can do that. So let's go ahead and pull out. As uh, For those of you that just joined, uh, again, what's really cool about this is your Raspberry Pi sits into this, what looks like an old um, Game Boy cartridge. And once we have that installed, we're going to plug that in and it's going to connect it to the rest of this device. So in theory, you could have multiple Raspberry Pis running multiple images and just like a, a cartridge, you could plug that in and give new capability to this device. I may be playing with that. I've already got some ideas for how that might work. So let's go ahead and start working on getting the Raspberry Pi Zero into this device. Now the screws are already have already been included. They're not on here, which I, I have to say I appreciate that I don't have to pull the screws out. So I think if I look at this, this should just be a pop off. And I'm going to do this very lightly and easily so I don't break anything. There we go. So there's the back. We'll put that over here to the side. Oh, we lost a viewer. Man, we're down again. Oh, well. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and then it says, uh, don't insert screws before put the shelf to. Wow, some of the, just a little language uh, uh, assistance would be helpful. Don't insert screws before put the shelf to. I'm not sure what that means. I guess we'll follow along in the instructions. Uh, this does have these, instead of normally what you would do, it's gonna be using the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi. I, I probably didn't mention that. It's gonna be using these pins normally we would insert a header here and we'd have to solder all those in. I do have a header, but what's nice is this package includes, I think they're called pogo pins that are just going to set in there. So it's a solder free operation, which uh, is actually pretty nice that we don't have to do any soldering. So let's go ahead and look at our instructions here. Um, it says this is a cover that can come out. Oh, there you go. So right here is a cover that comes in and out. Uh, I assume that, it, yes, that's for the micro SD. So that comes in and out. We'll go ahead and pull that out for now. Okay, so here's shelf. Oh, I see what they're trying to do. They're trying to help you align this with, when they say shelf, it's actually which part of the uh, cartridge, so to speak, that we're talking about. Okay, so we'll put those down here. All right, so once we do that, we grab our Raspberry Pi and I'll take all the credit for the views. You got it, man. You, you get all the credit, uh, and you're the only one talking, so you get the gold star for the day. Thank you. Hey, I really appreciate you being here. It, it's amazing. It does add a little bit of interactivity, and every once in a while I have to remember you're here, and I need to go over there and look at the chat room, which is uh, right over here for me. I'm looking over here at the chat, uh, so that's fun. Okay, let's see. We have, going back to this, Make sure I have everything aligned. Looks like I do. So then the next thing we do is take this and we are going to plug this in. If I'm reading this right, this would make sense to the second. Okay, so this is this is critical. You got you have two USB ports, but you got to make sure and plug it into the second one right there. So let's go ahead and make sure I do that. Get that up here so you can see that. So I'm going to push that in. So that was pretty painless. So now that's in. Um, now the next thing is it should, with the pogo pins, okay, so we're going to fold it over and then we're going to align these pogo pins. So they're touching. So th there's no there's no click. They don't really 
click in there they're just gonna it's just gonna be a touching kind of situation where they're making contact see that right there and that's how they're gonna stay okay so now that we do that we take our shelf one shelf one I think that is this one yes shelf one you gotta have to flip this in the right direction so far so good so far so good and then we're going to slide this onto you can see these posts right here so those posts are going to slide into those holes and that is going to ensure alignment of our pogo pins and it does hey that's that is pretty slick that was easier than i thought it was going to be although this still moves oh there we go get those in there now when we when we put the back on and the screws that should take care of everything so what i'm going to do now is let me make sure i'm doing this right yep put on the back shelf here and now you just got to kind of hold this so it doesn't flop out on you and that clicks in so even without the screws that all click together into a single unit that's pretty nice uh, and it's holding it on there because my concern was as I was putting on that on there this would pop off but it does not seem to be doing that okay so now we need our screws I'm assuming that's what we're doing yes so now we need our screws next and these are those really tiny screws but luckily again for those of you just joining us a free screwdriver is included with the kit how about that that's awesome let me move my microphone over here a little bit for you so you can hear me uh let's see anybody new nope still still it only one other additional person who's who's lurking on us roll doesn't want to come in and chat with us i don't know who it is but um hopefully they're they may be in a situation where they probably shouldn't be chatting it <clears throat> chatting at work so we we'll, we'll cut them some slack if they're watching um isn't this exciting man this is this is this is what youtube live is all about just watching some guy in his basement not my mother's in a basement putting something together this is you couldn't find this on any television station when i was growing up okay so let's go ahead and put this screw in here this is the perfect screwdriver i have to admit i think this is this is definitely going to work better than the one i had okay i'm not going to tighten it too tight because i do not want to mess these up okay since i know how this works i'm going to go ahead and drop the other three in there good news is about the time we get done with this our image should be done it is let me show you what's happening right now with our image with our image it is validating so we're at 60 percent validation so once that's done validating we should have a good image so let's go ahead and go back to our workbench here so you can watch me put some screws in I'm sure that's exciting too to watch all right so then we're going to take our custom screwdriver I'm, this screwdriver is definitely going to stay next to my handy dandy zenith data systems see this this alone right here tells you how old i am Raul. um uh, zenith data systems hasn't been around since the 80s maybe early 90s and i used to sell computers in a computer store that sold D Zenith data systems PCs uh, at the time they were called group bulls well I got one of these uh, as part of their sales kit and I've had it ever since and I, for some reason I just love this little screwdriver so there you go history of my screwdriver there's even more exciting stuff for you and of course now I've goofed around and good good to know this little screwdriver that's included is magnetic so that is at least help me not lose this screw because I've knocked it out of the hole about six times already all right I think I've got one more here I'll tell you the uh, the non solder installation of this is definitely a plus because if you are somebody who just kind of wants to learn about Raspberry Pis and tinker and play that this is a great way to do it uh, Raspberry Pi Zeros, I think I mentioned, they're about $25 in the kit I purchased. Uh, in some ways, the kit I purchased, which I will have a link later if you're interested, is cheaper than a Raspberry Pi alone. So there we go. That's that's it. We've got the Raspberry Pi W uh, into the actual 
cartridge that's going to go in the back here. Now, I assume it's okay to go ahead and it's probably what they're going to say next. Yes. So let's see. We've done everything. We've done everything. These are some pretty basic instructions, though. They don't tell you a whole lot. Um, there is a um, PDF that comes with, uh, that you can download where you can get some more information. Okay. So now we'll take that cartridge and we're just going to push that back in. And that's on there. And look, I, I knew I was going to get that dirty. Let me go ahead and wipe that off. I've got a cloth here somewhere. Uh, let's see, where is my cloth for wiping off screens? Oh, here's something for you. Uh, this is a package that just arrived today. I'm excited about. There'll be more about that later. So a little teaser for you. All right, hang on a second. I know I've got a, I've got a mess over here because I've been stacking stuff on top of each other. What do I do with it? Well, there you go. I can't find my cloth. Okay, well, we'll do the old uh, normal thing that we always do, and you didn't see this. Okay, see? Oh. Okay, that's clean enough for now. All right. Okay, so let's go back and see how we are doing with our card that we flashed with the Super Retro Boy Revision E. Looks like it's done. Uh, we should go ahead and eject that. So I'm going to find the Retro Pie here. Um, now, actually I say that, before we do that, I think there is some setup that we need to do uh, before we get started and we need to drop that information over to this card. So let me take a quick look here. Um, if you remember, I downloaded, also downloaded a, another file that was called the, uh, it's not that one, uh, da, 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 da. this one, here we go. It was called the WPA Supplicant Conf. So let me open that up right here. Uh, I'm not going to open it. Yeah, we'll open it in code. That'll work out perfectly. That's a lightweight text editor. And this is the information for your network uh, that you're supposed to drop over. So you can see your SSID, your password here. Uh, and then what you do is you take that and you drop it over to the boot sector over here. And let me just make sure there's not already one on here. Um, looks like there is not. So let's go back and let's just verify that that's what they want us to do. So we'll go back to our downloads. There is a, looks like, let's see, where was that? Nope, that's not it. That's something else. What am I doing? There we go. Get it here in just a second. Um, make sure these, this, these are not instructions. Okay, so not a lot of information, but if I remember, that's what we need to do here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in some information. I'm going to save this and uh, put it right back. So I am not going to broadcast what my Wi-Fi information is. So I have a nice handy dandy screen for you while I work on this. So I'll be right back. Let me work on this on the screen here a little bit. Let's see, I need the network name. Interestingly, uh, it is case sensitive and I have a weird name. So I'm actually gonna have to figure out how I did that. Okay, that's right, I forgot. I did it like a camel case thing. And then my password. And then I'm going to save that and let me close that and open it back up again and verify that it saved it. It did, 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 did not. What happened there? Oh, there we go. Uh, and save, and I'm going to save that directly to the boot partition. 
not the boot partition. We want to save it directly to the RetroPy distribution. Let's see. It is not wanting to save for some reason. This is very odd. Let's try this again. There we go. All right, I got it. Uh, okay, so now I think I can take my bug zapping screen off and get you back to here. So what I've got is this WPA supplicant.com file that I'm going to drag over to the uh, SD card. So let's see if I can get that done here. Uh, here's the file. I'm just gonna do a copy and then we'll come over to the boot partition right here and we are going to i believe it's the boot partition i'm pretty sure yes it's the boot partition and then we are going to paste and uh, that should be on there now let's go ahead and see if we can find it you can see it right there so that's good and uh, now that we've done that now we can eject the sd card from this computer so let's go ahead and do that make sure i get the right one because if I did this one or this one, that would be bad. So we'll hit this one. And that has done that. All right, let's go back to our workbench. How far? Let's see. We are 49 minutes in, and we have done not much of anything at this point, except I guess we've done a little bit. Uh, so that's pretty good. So let me go ahead and eject this. We're going to go ahead and pull the micro SD card out of here. And then we are going to insert it. And uh, boy, I, I believe this way. And of course I got it wrong on the first shot. Of course, I got it wrong. I always get it wrong. Okay, let's try it again. Ha, huh. says me, I was right the first time. I just didn't push hard enough. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this in there. Well, I say that. Okay, looks like we have a problem. It is not wanting to go in there. Let me see what have I done here. Maybe I was wrong the first time. I was wrong. Okay, there we go. So the pins point towards the back. So I'm going to go ahead and push that in. I'm going to use this flathead just to make sure it's in there. Okay, it is. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my plug back on, which, guess what, guys? I should have put that back on before I put this in. I did. I made a mistake. There's an error. Okay. So this should not come off. You should go ahead and put that on. Then when it puts on, then you can open it up and pull it out. So I have made that mistake. I am not going to do that here and fix that. I will fix that afterwards. So I'll just set that aside because everything's fine right now. Just don't have the plug. All right. So I think now what we are going to do is, oh, you know what I can use? I can use this nice felt case to wipe this off because that's exactly... Oh, that's perfect. There we go. Use your white or your felt case that comes with this thing to clean your screen. That's perfect. Uh, because that's all I had was a felt cleaner that I was looking for. Now, okay, here we go. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to take our adapter and we're going to plug it in. Everything looks good. And we're going to plug it into my power source over here. It is plugged in. Now, what we need to do now is figure out, usually when you plug it in, it just turns on. So, there, oh, here we go, right here. Here's our on-off switch, right here. Okay, so we're going to apply power. Keep those fingers crossed, roll, here we go. I have power light. I have retro flag. Look at me. So far, so good. This is usually not how things go for me. 
Uh, we've got some kind of fading thing going on here. I sure hope that's part of the boot process. It appears to be. Yep, back up. Hey, Google, dim workbench lamp, lamp to 10%. That should make it easier for you to see. Okay, it's still still going through some process here with retro flag. I wonder if it's going to take that long to boot every time. I hope not. Tell you what, now that we're let me go ahead and move this a little bit down a little bit for you. Ooh, nice sound, super retro boy. I'll tell you what, uh, that is pretty cool. That is that's. I'm digging that, man. That is way cool. Hey, it looks like it's just me and you again, Raul. Uh, here we go. Ports. Five games available in ports. So there is something here. Uh, Retro Pie options. I'm using the keys here. Here's our favorites. Uh, zero games available. Last played. That's nice. Last played. We have our ports here and our Retro Pie options and our favorites. I'll tell you what, let's go to ports. And I think it is going to be, it's got a nice little menu here. Here's select. Uh, looks like that's not it. Let's try A. There we go. We have included in the distribution. Hey, this is nice. We have at least a couple of games that are open source that you can include, which is really good. We have uh, Doom. We have... Cannonball, Duke Nukem 3D, Freedom, Phase 1, and Phase 2. I th That would be interesting. Let's go ahead and do... I like that everything's configured. Uh, other distributions, you would actually have to go in here and figure out um, how to set all this up. But with this distribution, it just works. So it really is a nice addition to this case. Let's go ahead. Should we try Doom? Oh, why not? Let's do Doom. What's not to like about Doom? Other than Nazis, of course. We don't like Nazis. Okay, we'll give this a second to boot up. Now, it's not as fast as a Game Boy. Um, you know, oh, how about that? I have Doom in my hand. Here, let me move this up to the mic so you can hear it. This, this screen... I don't know. It's hard to tell maybe with the camera, but let me turn our volume down. Traditional volume, that's nice. That's pretty cool. Um, you don't have to use some kind of uh, punch pad, but you can see that that has got a pretty good angle of view on it. If I can keep it off the screen, that's not bad at all. Uh, shall, we, shall we see how it plays? Let's go ahead and hit start there we go and there's our options you can see all of our general setup there uh, in game message on let's see what's under setup compatibility so we've got all the standard stuff it is it is working well we've got our sound volume let's go ahead and do new game let's see how quickly I uh, don't do well knee deep in the dead the shores of hell or inferno let's just do knee deep in the dead um, choose skill level. Hey, I, I'm too young to die. Uh, not too rough. We'll do that one. It's been forever since I've... This is very responsive. I am very surprised that the Raspberry Pi Zero is this smooth for this game, admittedly. Um, you can see I have not played in forever. Let's, let's, let's shoot and see what happens. I think I can... Can I shoot that barrel? Yep, that's what I thought. And it looks like the H is the shoot. Okay, so now to get back to the menu, typically on these things, uh, here, let's just go ahead and go upstairs so you can see up. That's pretty nice, isn't it? Okay, so I could sit here and play all day. I am not going to do that. Uh, but typically the way you get back to the menu on these, on this game, you can, uh, it looks like you can just exit by hitting the start and you can quit game and that'll take you back out. Sometimes to exit in these types of systems, you press both the select and the start at the same time. Um, and well, this is interesting. It went back to uh, this, this menu here, which probably means I need to do my quick start. There it is. So select and start will get you back to that main home screen. Let's try Cannonball 
and see what happens there. Launching. And that did not launch, so I'm not sure what happened there. Let's try Duke Nukem. Launching. And looks like we have the startup screen here. There's our old buddy Duke from the day. Decent sound again. New game. We'll see. And let's rock. And there you go. How about that? Duke Nukem in the palm of your hand. Pretty good. Okay, so there we go. And uh, I forget. There's like jump. Yeah, that's right. Jumping on board. Gosh, it's been forever since I played this game. So let's go ahead and start. Go back to our beginning. Are you sure you want to quit? Yes. And we're out. Okay, so there we go. Let's see if we can go back here. Let's go back to menu. I don't want to do that one. Um, main menu. So this is running a Retro uh, Pi. And you can see you have a scraper and everything else. Uh, so lots to learn about this. Here's our options, Bluetooth, controller tools, RetroPie Utilities. Now, I think uh, we can check our disk space here. Let's see what happens here. I may have to expand our 16 gigabyte card to allow for more um, games to be put on here. You have 11 gigs available on your GPI. So we have, we have, we have space. So I have 11 gigs worth of room to put retro games. So that shouldn't be bad. Uh, configuration editor file with raspy config let's check raspy config out and see if we have everything in there that we need some places online have talked about uh, overclocking i don't think i'm going to do that here's network options um, interesting i'm not oh there we go localization interface overclock advanced one of these buttons is going to be advanced there it is, select, and expand file system, select, one of these buttons, there we go. Uh, partition has been resized, okay, so that's good. So let's do this one. The other thing I wanna do is um, I want to, interfacing let's see yes here we go I want to enable SSH so that I can upload games to uh, over the network so let's do this one select uh, would you like to enable I would okay it says it is enabled that's perfect now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check my network options configuration. So I'm going to take it off the screen because it's going to display my network's uh, information. So I'm going to move away for a second so you can't see that. And uh, looking looks like Wi-Fi. It did not. add my SSID to this this um, Raspberry Pi W. So uh, when I use the, uh, sup, the Wi-Fi supplicant.com, it did not get that information in there. So I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, I'm gonna have to play around with that. Let's reboot, say yes. So what I should do is go back and see if I can find some instructions here.
Okay, we'll let that go. And while that's rebooting, let me see if I can find some corrections here. All right, so let's reboot it here. Um, I'm going to hit select. Actually, now I'm not getting anything. Interesting. Okay, let's go back here and, uh, yeah, interestingly now, I can't do anything. So, let's go ahead and do a shutdown. And you can see it shutting down when I hit the switch, which is nice, because you don't just kill the power. It actually goes through a shutdown procedure, which is very nice, because if you just kill the power, a lot of times you will destroy your SD image. So that's good. And it's... That's really nice. It's got this really slow fading out to shut down. I think I now know what this is supposed to do. I believe, and I think I'm going to go back in here and do this a little bit later. I believe this is a heat sink of sorts between those two cards. Um, yeah, it looks like that's going to go right on there and act as a mini heat sink. So I will probably put that on as well. So I've got two things I need to fix. That, that, and I need to figure out why this is not um, working on reboot and uh, why the Wi-Fi didn't just catch. So a little bit of work there that needs to be done. Um, I... I'm probably pretty much done at this point for, for uh, Raul, who's watching with me. Um, but I am going to go ahead and just um, keep this live while I figure out some things. Um, so other than that, though, I think we've got, at least we got through a first boot up and we've kind of seen how it works. I think we're in pretty good shape for now. Um, but again, I'm going to go ahead and leave it live and I'm going to see if I can figure out some of my supplemental problems here. I might actually go ahead and uh, download game and put it on there though. Uh, but uh, it's going to be a while, but at least this way I'll keep it recording. And then when I crunch this down into a short video that shows all these steps, I'll have that in there. So uh, not as much narrative now. I'm probably going to go silent for a little bit, but you can continue to watch if you like. I am going to kill the power here. So let me go ahead and turn this off. There we go. And we'll turn this back on, see if I can get. Meanwhile, back at the ranch. Oh, shaking my computer here. Let's see if I can figure out what's going on with. Although now I wonder if this might not be. Something that goes somewhere on here. I'm going to have to research that. I have no earthly idea what this thing is. You would think they would tell you somewhere. Oh, well, let me go get my instructions here, see if I can figure this out.
Oh, good. That's working again. Whew. So we're good there. Um, I'm going to see if I can figure out what my IP... Let me just make sure that... Oops, I don't want that one. Let's go back. Virtual Pi options. There we go. Let's see if we can figure out Wi Fi. Let's see. It says dis enable Wi Fi. Maybe I had to enable it. Maybe, maybe everything's there. I just needed to enable it in the menu. It says Wi Fi enabled. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. Um, now, I don't, let's see, show IP. And if we get an IP address, then I'll know that my Wi-Fi supplicant worked. Uh, oh, I do have an IP. Look at this. IP address, loop back. Oh, look, looky there. We do, we do have an IP address. So, evidently, uh, good news, good news. I have Wi-Fi uh, connected and running. I just needed to activate it in the menu. Let me see if I can ping that address. So what I'm going to do, I just want to make sure it's not like a virtual address. So what I'm going to do is I've, I've brought up my terminal here, and I'm going to go ahead and we're going to ping that address. It's an uh, internal address, so I'm not worried about you guys seeing it. 168.86.36, and if I can ping that, I can. So we are online, that is awesome. So now I should be able to SSH pi at one, ah, 192.168.86.36. And yes, and then it's going to ask me for a password. Now nor normally it's, it's, it's the normal Raspberry. Let's check it out. And it is. So we are in. And then you can see right here. I'm going to blow that up for you so you can see it. You can see that we have access to our file system. We can run it in SSH, which is super cool. Uh, so if you stuck around, you got to see something really cool here. Uh, the great thing about this is we can start to do things like uh, updating the whole thing. So I can do sudo apt update. And uh, we'll let that just kind of go through. I'm very excited about that. I don't need Etcher anymore. Let's go ahead and close that out. I was I was super excited. This is a window. I just I cannot get it to close. I don't know what's going on. Oh, it, it finally closed. There you go. I say I couldn't get it closed and then it closed. Um, so that's nice. So this is uh, so far so good. Let's let's. Uh, I'm going to pull down a, an Atari 2600 ROM that I own. Um, so let's go to uh, and, and what I do is I just go to Google and I own uh, Pac-Man, which is a horrible version of Pac-Man on the Atari 2600. So here we go. Oh my goodness, are you kidding? It's actually Pac-Man up here. How cool is that? So uh, let's go to Atari 2600 Pac-Man, if I can spell it, Pac-Man ROM. And you'll find these things everywhere. That's the 800. I want the 2600 right here. And I'm going to download the file. And, uh, ooh, that's not what I want. That is, uh, that is something weird. you got to be careful. Some of these sites try and trick you. Uh, and that's not what we're looking. There is, and, and I don't download a bunch of ROMs, so I don't know where the best place to get these things are. Um, but I think, let's see if this one's good. Uh, da, 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 Facebook. I don't know how you download it. Is it here? Maybe this is it. 
Oh, here we go. Uh, Pac-Man, 2600. But isn't that just the page I was on? Uh, so not sure. See, this is the problem. Let's do, I'm going to go to Atari Age because I can just get a homebrew and put it on there. AtariAge.com. We're going to grab a homebrew game. Let's do Atari 2600. Let's grab, um, let's see, how does that work? I think we go down to, here's emulation, archives, companies. Let me do just, do Atari Agent Homebrews. So Homebrews are games that others uh, have created just recently for these systems. And I'm going to grab this Galagon. Uh, evidently, this is really good. You can purchase it as a physical cartridge, but you can also download it, is my understanding. And I've been reading on these. I have not done this yet, but I've been really anxious to try this. So let's see where the actual download link is. Again, if you want the cartridge and the actual instructions, you can buy it as a physical, which is nice. So... My understanding was is you could download just the ROM, and interestingly enough, I don't see how to do that. Um, so let's see if we can find that. Bestsellers. I'm definitely going to be editing a lot of uh, Anybody out there, a uh, home brewer, know where I can download the ROMs for these things? Let's see. How to play, tractor beam, gameplay. Uh, maybe I should just type Atari Age Galagon ROM download. Looks like somebody else has done that too. And da -da -da -da. is this it? This is this is the um, the rabbit hole that you get sent on when you're in retro gaming. I gotta tell you this. Oh wait, was that something? There it is. Galaga demo NTSC uh, version two. Okay, let's try this one. And let's put that uh, in our downloads folder. It looks like it's got a bin file, so that's good. So we'll save and we'll show folder downloads okay so now if you want to copy that over you have to connect uh, to this device via some kind of FTP uh, software to do that and in this case um, oh I've got some updates uh, let me see uh, just upgrade let's see what it's wanting to upgrade here Uh, yeah, we'll do that later. I won't do that while I'm here, so we won't worry about that. So now that I have that, I do need to uh, connect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the, I should be able to use the built-in files application here. And let's see, this is going to stretch my, my ability again. So I am going to, um, I am going to create a new connection to a server. Connect to server. The address will do SSH. The server, let me just go ahead and copy that again up here so I don't have to redo that. The server address was here. So I'm going to copy that from here. I'm going to go back over here and into the server. I'm going to go here. It is this port. The folder, I'm not sure. I wish I could figure that out. But the username is pi and the password is raspberry. And again, that's standard for everything that we do. And we're going to connect. And it's connecting, and you see that we're in. Now, what I don't remember is where things are stored. Um, so this is where it gets a little tricky. So let me do a quick search. Uh, where to store ROMs on RetroPie. Uh, da, da, da. RetroPie ROMs. Okay, so let's see if we can find RetroPie 
So that looks like it's in user games. No. Home. Pi. There we go. Retro Pi. ROMs. Now we're getting there. And this was an Atari 2600. So it's going to go there. So let me go ahead and bring um, up a new tab here and downloads. And it is we're right here. We're going to drag that over to here. Well, I think I'm going to drag it through there. Or, or not. Hold on. Let's copy it. There we go. Now, that has moved it from the computer to the device via SSH. So there's the process for that. So let's go back and see if we can see it on this device. Now, I don't remember if you have to reboot. It seems like you have to go through a, a scrubbing process for that to happen. So um, i go ahead and clear that out. Let's go and uh, I think if I restart, and that's a different option. So let me go back here and um, yeah, let's go back. Let's go here and quit. And let's restart emulation station, which is this top option. I apologize. This is really hard to see. I know this is not good. So let's restart our emulation station. Really? Yes, really. Now, when I go back in, I should have a game in my 2600 folder. And there it is. You can see it just popped up. Atari 2600. So we are on a roll. Let's go ahead. It says one game available. Let's go ahead and do that. And it says uh, the Galaga Demo version 2 NTSC, which is the one I chose. And let's keep our fingers crossed. Keeping our fingers crossed. It's going to load. It's launching. Now, again, this is a homebrew version. It is a um, kind of a clone of Galaga. I'm sure you all are familiar with. Uh, if it works at all, because I'm not seeing anything on the screen right now. Oh, there we go. Looks like I saw something on the bottom here. I hear something. Uh, I hear something, but it is not working. Let's try and reload that. Try it again here. Launching. I'm going to get at least one game working on this thing before I close this video. Hang in there. We are going to upload and we are going to get something working. Trust me. Microsoft X360. And this is not it, evidently. Okay, let's see if we can find something else. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to remove that ROM, get that one out of there. Let's go back to our desktop. Well, I appreciate it all. I, I'm glad you think it's it's cool, but man, it uh, it's getting a little boring and dry right now. I know. Um, let's delete permanently. We're going to get something working here, though. I guess that's the thing. When you do these live streams that you're not really planning, you just say, oh, you know what, I'm going to do a project today, and I'm just going to kind of see where it goes. Um, this is what you get. You get a lot of fluff. But again, I think I can use the video and... Uh, later edit it down to something that some people might want to watch two or three minutes of. It may help them. Let me, um, I'm going to go ahead and I do own Galaga. Uh, so uh, Galaga, um, was that available for the Atari 2600 ever? I don't know that it was. I don't know if there was ever an original version of that. Uh, I could do the main version, I guess, but uh, we'll do this one. Uh, 2600 ROM. Let's see what happens. So this is that same one that didn't work. Um, let's let's do something a little more classic. I know this one was on there, Defender, and I own this one too. Uh, I, I think I own on the the cartridges almost all of the the uh, well I wouldn't say all of them. I have some the most popular ones. Um, so let's see if we can grab this one, Cool Rom. Eh. You know, I'm sure there, oh, this is that same one that tried to get me to download a EXE file, I think. Yeah, see, this is, this is, that's a bogus site. Don't go there. 
This is for the 800. Let's see, Rom's Maniac, if that is one that's not going to do some kind of devilish thing to me. It says my ROM is downloading. It is a zip file. So that's a little suspicious, but we're going to give it a shot. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the downloads. And let's go ahead and show in folder. Now, on, on some of these, you can actually uh, just copy the zip over. I'm going to try that um, since it's in there. So I'm going to copy this bring it over here and I'm going to paste it. Okay, so now that is there. Now remember we have to go back over here now. So let me go back to my workbench. We do have to restart this. So let's go ahead and quit and restart, restart emulation station. Yes, now you don't have to restart the system, just emulation station, which is the, uh, the software on here. Okay, it says one game available. Let's hope that it is Defender. There we go. All right, we're going to try this again. Now, this is, if this is the real ROM, then we should be smooth sailing and we will have had our first game on here. So let's see what happens. Launching. It seems like it's taking a long time to launch an Atari 2600 game. Oh, and it works. Hey, 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 check us out. I know the frustration, right? Reminds me of putting new ROMs on my Nexus. I know, right? The old Nexus 6 and, and, and trying to install. You know, I still have my Nexus 6 ROM and uh, I'm thinking about putting, what is it, Lineage OS on there to see if I can get some more use out of it. Uh, but look, this appears to be working. Uh, Defender is, in fact, going. Let's press start. And... Yes, very nice version of the game. Look at that. Whoa, I about died there. And I just died. So, uh, we do have the Atari 2600 version of Defender working. And you can see me taking out all kinds of stuff and dying. How about that? I am really good at dying, let me tell you. I am the best at dying in this game. But I have to say, again, sounds great. Um, the, the screen is just really good. I mean, it's a, obviously a low resolution screen, but it is perfect for these types of games. And I just died again. So this is, this is really nice. And this is an Atari 2600 game. Uh, really excited about that. Now, I want to try one more. I had, since I had good luck, I had good luck. Let's try one more. I'd love to find a Commodore 64 game. Anybody have any recommend, anybody Commodore 64 fans out there? Let's see what they say. What is, um, see, I have some Commodore 64 games, but I don't know what I have. I'm trying to remember um, um, Commodore 64 ROMs. Let me look, it'll refresh my memory. I'm trying to remember which ones. I have, oh, um, what's that one? Shoot, let me, I'll find it here in a minute. I do not own Pac-Man, although I own Pac-Man on Atari 2600. Okay, this is a little bit of a, I know I'm kind of cheating a little bit here. Um, but let me go ahead and just grab this one since it's the first thing I saw. And it is a zip, uh, so that's perfect. Let's go ahead and save that and show in folder and let's go ahead and um, copy bring that over to here we're going to move this back out of the atari 2600 now this one you have to go down and find the actual computer uh in 60 that's nintendo 64 it should be let's see commodore because this supports commodore I think you have to create the folder, if I remember, and I think you have to put in C64 for this to work. So let me go ahead and create a new folder. New folder and C64. Okay, we'll go in here and we will paste. All right, so now that is copied over. So then we're gonna go back over to our device again. We're gonna start 
Uh, we're going to restart our system. Quit. Restart emulation station. Yes. Let's see what happens. Okay, there's Atari 2600 ports, RetroPie favorites, last plate. It is not picking it up. So I did something wrong. Um, and I'm sure this supports C64 because I've seen it do that. So let me see what I've done wrong. RetroPie. Commodore 64. Okay, so here's our docs for that. So the Vice emulator, uh, place your ROMs in ROM C64, RetroPie ROM C64. Did, isn't that what we did? Let's see. Um, oops. Well, rats. These are the, my downloads. What am I doing? What am I doing? I've lost my mind. Okay, here we go. Um, RetroPie ROMs C64. They are in there. Pi RetroPie ROM C64. Once you start an exit advice, uh, once it'll create a symbolic link, uh, looks like exited the vice emulator let's go ahead and for this one we may need to we may actually need to reboot the system so i'm going to go ahead and do that so i'm going to quit and restart system yes No, maybe that's a maybe that's a plate. I don't know what that is. It would be look really nice right there, wouldn't it? Have that Raspberry Pi powered by Raspberry Pi. Um, I'll I'll research this and see where this goes. All right, we're rebooting. I love the little Game Boy ding. That is that is really nice. Well, we've been at this for 90 minutes. I I when I originally started this, I thought, you know, this is about a, a an hour, hour and a half project. We're we're about there. So um, and I've only got a few things I need to just kind of work on. Now, see, here's this thing where I rebooted it. And now the interesting, when you, if you just reboot, it doesn't want the, it won't release the controls and they don't work. So that is a problem. I'm going to have to research that. You actually have to shut this thing down in order to get this thing to work again. So I'm going to do the shut off script. There it goes. I think probably if I go ahead and run the upgrades on that, that will probably help some of that. Um, there were several upgrades that were kind of firmware based. I'd like to get that updated. So nice retro kind of um, fading out there. Okay, and this happened the last time where it went through the fading and it didn't really turn it completely off. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it all, all the way off right there. So now, um, I think that's it. I think that's all I'm going to do for the software for now. Uh, or, wait, we were going to, the whole reason we did that is we were going to check the, um, the uh, Commodore 64. But the first thing I'm going to do is, is fix this real quickly here. So bear with me while I, I'm going to go ahead and get that back on there. I'm sure with this thing there's, and I'm going to research, uh, obviously I'll be spending a lot of time with this. Um, I'm sure there's lots of tweaks. 
as I mentioned at the very beginning, there are distributions of, or images that you can get for the SD card that include uh, games. Um, I'm always leery about doing that just because of the, there is a kind of a copyright thing. And yes, I know a lot of people say, well, those games aren't even produced anymore. Some of those companies are out of business. Yes, some of them are. And in that case, I would not be as hesitant um, to, to download a ROM if I can't get a copy. But many of those, co uh, those um, companies are still online, available, making games, and uh, they use that as revenue to sell these retro games packages. Um, I'm also not one to say that at one point I have owned and paid for a lot of games and I've since gotten rid of them. That still didn't give me the right to go out and just kind of download them. I chose to get rid of them. So um, I think we just, just need to be respectful of, of folks is kind of my thing. So um, especially one of the things you don't want to do is, is for instance, promote people to go download ROMs and I don't want people to think I am doing that so I want to just kind of keep that in mind all right I've got this back on here um, this this is not a heat sink there's no way because there's no place it would go this is some kind of just sticker we put somewhere I guess you could uh, I don't know wow you know what it kind of looks like it would fit right there real nicely but I don't know why you would do that um, I kind of, before I put this together, want to figure out what that is. So hold on. Let's go back to my Amazon listing and see if we can figure out what that thing is. So Amazon. Let's go to my orders. Let's go here. Let's see what that thing is that's included. Uh, here's This is the uh, Amazon listing, by the way. SD card, heat sink. Oh, it is a heat sink. Look at that. It is a heat sink. So I guess while we're in here, we should go ahead and put the heat sink on here. So that's going to be for this device here, the uh, CPU. Um, <laughs> I'm saying, hey, look at the CPU, and you're not even looking at it. Okay, so there you go. Let me move this back up here. But this is actually a heat sink that will go on there. I will be. I, I was not expecting that. So let me go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and get this off. I like that the heat sink actually includes a little RPI logo. That's that's pretty nice. Oh, I got that on the first bat, the first try. Look at me. I am rocking and rolling now. Okay, so get that back there. This is back in. I think that's the way that works. Let's see. Let's get this back in. Oh, it's going to go in this way. There we go. Let's just go ahead and put this back in the way it should go. Which is interesting. All right, there we go. That way we can get it in and out if we need to. We'll put this back on. You know, I should actually re-edit this at the very beginning so nobody knows I made a mistake. That's what I should do. But no, that's not me. Warts and all, that's what I say. Warts and all. Nobody's perfect. My wife likes to tell me that I think I am. I disagree. She believes I am, but I'm not. So she's projecting. Don't tell her I said that because she would tell me I am completely wrong. And she would be correct. She most always is correct, honestly. All right. Let's go ahead and finish getting these little screws in here. Again, appreciating the screwdriver. Uh, and uh, uh, the heat sink is uh, really interesting that that is included. I should really prepare for these videos before I do them, Raul and whoever else is watching. Thank you both for watching, by the way. That's awfully nice of you to spend 97 minutes of your life with me. And I trust me, I'm going to get off here in just a little bit. Uh, I just want to make sure I capture a few things. Okay, we've got that put back together. Let's go ahead and plug that back in. I do want to see if we can buy extra of these cartridges because that would be really cool. All right, let's go ahead and plug us back in. 
turn our power on and let's wait for the boot. While that's doing that, I'm going to reconnect to the SSH via SSH because when I disconnected, that obviously went away. And we're back. Super Retro Boy. And I can put in my password. And I'm back via SSH. And uh, okay, so there's the Atari 2600 again. Uh, but again, no C64. So, bummer. I guess I'm going to have to um, research that a little bit more. Um, let's see what actually we have installed here. Let's go back here. Entire connect the server, and unfortunately, I did not save this. Um, so I'm gonna have to go back and reconnect. You guys will watch me reconnect again. Let's go back here. So again, if I'm gonna connect via SSH. I got I, I need the uh, IP address, which is in my SSH address that I just grabbed. I'm going to, have to assign that a, an ID or an address on my um, Wi-Fi router. So, and again, username is Pi, password is Raspberry. Remember this, connect. It's connecting, we're in. And then what I'm going to do is make this a favorite so I don't lose it. And um, it should let me... Yeah, maybe not. Oh, I've got to do actually a uh, a folder. I can't do the whole area. So let's go to user. Oh, wait. Nope, not user. Shoot. Let's go home. Pi. And retro pi. That's the one I want to uh, make as a bookmark. And you can see that pops up over here. So I'll always have that now. So go into retro pi. ROMs. Uh, and uh, let's see what we have here. I, I'm still surprised that that's not in there, but let's grab, let's grab something else 8-bit. Let's do a Z, ZX Spectrum ROM. That could be fun. Um, I think there's some ZX Spectrum homebrews out there too. Let's see if we can grab a ZX Spectrum. ZX Spectrum homebrew download. Uh, here's Homebrew Legends. Is that a homebrew or is that a... Uh, these look like homebrews. Yep, these are Homebrew Legends. Let's see, what looks good? What do we like? Um, something, ooh, this Astronaut Labyrinth. That speaks to me for some reason. I have no earthly idea why, but it really speaks to me. Um, this looks kind of fun. Get it here now. Let's, let's do that. Let's get it here now. And here is the game. Um, playing the game. The energy bar. Controls. Oh, it uses a keyboard for controls. Um, and a lot of these ZX Spectrum games did. I am not going to do that one. This, this could be a nightmare. Um, let's see. What other game... What other things are just built in by default that might work and fit my retro gaming uh, MAME? Let's do MAME. Let's do MAME. I have owned Zaxxon for years. Let's see if it's on here. Uh, Zaxxon MAME ROM. Let's see. These are most typically available. These are, these are usually available because most of these companies have kind of left the forefront. Download will be started. It is, oh, look at that, there we go, Zaxxon. Let's go ahead and put it right, I got, can't send directly to, let's go ahead and put it in here, save. All right, show in folder. Let's uh, copy that. Let's go into our ROMs. Let's go into, I think we put it in Oh, I remember I had problems with this one too. Where do I put it? I think it's 
maim for all uh or is it just the i think it's maim for all let's try it paste okay now let's go back to our system and let's restart the emulator emulation station yes And we have a main game. Uh, so here it is, Zaxxon. Keep those fingers crossed. Let's see what happens. Now this one really worked well with a joystick. I don't know how it's going to work with this little keypad. I've never tried it. But could be fun. We have coin. Uh, let's see, one player, two player, I think. Here we go. Oh, look at that. Zaxxon, the home screen. You can see that. All right, let's see if we, how we, there we go. Player one, push one player button, push two player button. And we are playing, we need some volume. I don't seem to have any volume. Uh, start whoops there we go let's go back here and you can see we've got a couple of games on here uh, again some of the favorites uh, are, are there are a few on those ports uh, but overall pretty pleased with this again that screen is pretty good it's got a good field of view it's got good sound I'm anxious to try out the headset I'm sure that'll work again it is battery operated so we'll get the battery working on that but I also think that once once I get a, a selection of games on here that is um, um, kind of the ones that I just want, I'll probably disable the Wi-Fi again because that'll save the battery life. Uh, I'm sure the Wi-Fi is going to draw some battery from here. It'll be I'll be anxious to see how long our batteries last. So that's it. That is me on the workbench with the Retro Flag GPI case. It was a fun little build. It's a great way to spend a Friday afternoon in a COVID environment, that is for sure. So thanks to Raul for joining me online. He was the only one to kind of win in here. It says my audio went a bit weird. You are sounding like Andre the Giant. I hope it got better because I don't want to be Andre the Giant. Good reference though. Nice reference to Andre the Giant. So thank you for joining me. And there's a couple more that popped in. Um, again, I do plan to probably take this, edit it down. I'll keep the live version up in case somebody really is just bored to tears and they want to watch uh, almost two hours worth of me on a workbench. But I'll probably take the, vi the video and also tailor it down to a little bit smaller package and maybe include some additional supplemental stuff. So thank you for watching, Raul and everybody else. I will see you around on the intertubes, as we say.